the name above every other name the name of Jesus is mighty name of Jesus is powerful the name of Jesus will heal you today call upon the name of Jesus call upon the name of the Lord and be healed today Glorify His name. Call upon the name. Call upon the name. The name above all names. Call upon the name. The name. Call upon the name. The name of Jesus. Call upon the name. Call upon the name. Call upon the name. The name of Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Kandalama sandalamo salama. Nibra kotalamanda bra kandolomo seta. Krola randara na 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 sa. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Be saved. Your name is wonderful. Your name is powerful. Your name is wonderful. Jesus. Your name is wonderful. Your name is powerful. Your name is wonderful. Jesus. We trust in your name. We call upon your name. No one compares to you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. We worship you in the beauty of holiness. Romba baba rasa talama shekaba. Sandalama bronder karaba vrusara. Re lambras talama ronda. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, Father. Lord, as we turn our hearts to your word, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus who is with us in our midst right now. Spirit of the living God, teach us, lead us, guide us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for revelation knowledge from on high. As we focus upon you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ushkala, Mambra, Koro, Kara, Baram, Bareba, Boro, Toro, Bora, Sita, Lava. We thank you in Jesus' name. Can we give the Lord a praise? Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a clap. A shout of praise. A hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord our God. Amen, amen. Take your seats. Glory to God. Those of you watching us online, welcome to Family Worship Center. Where love and unity resides, families are restored, amen, and the community serve with the purpose of God. Hallelujah. As we begin this, these next 21 days regarding fasting and prayer, I want to put some things in you that will help you and strengthen you on this journey. Amen. So we began speaking about prayer. So now I want to bring fasting in. And as the Lord leads us, we will build in the next few weeks. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I want to talk about the basics of fasting with you. And go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 6. And when you come to Matthew chapter 6, let's read from verse 1. Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Tell your neighbor, motive. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when, when you do your arms, tell your neighbor, when. Ask your neighbor, are you stingy? I hope not. When you do your arms, do not sound the trumpet before men. Look, I am giving her a gift. And then you sound it. The Bible says, look, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Because when men clap for you, ooh, done. No more reward for you. But I want you to notice, when you give alms, so that means as a believer, you are required to give. Amen. For God so loved the world that He... Be ye imitators of God as dear children. So if God is a giver, so are you. If you are not, you are not yielding to the new nature that's in you. Mm. Therefore, when you do... Okay, next verse, next verse. Praise the Lord. But when you do your arms, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So do it under cover, on the down low. Now you can find down low, no? Amen. Next verse. That thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which sees in secret himself shall reward you openly. So your reward will be open and it will be from the Father. Amen. And you know God is an abundant God. He gives good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Hallelujah. Next verse. And when you pray, tell your neighbor when, not if. Do you know we saw giving when you do it, which means it's a requirement. Now we see prayer is a requirement. You don't just pray because you feel like it. You pray because you are commanded to. And in the light of what we spoke about last week, if you want God involved in your life, you have to be a person of prayer. Amen? Because prayer is heavenly permission granting, earth granting heaven permission to interfere. Earthly license for heavenly intervention. Hallelujah. And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Amen. Next verse. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you shut the door, pray to your Father which is in secret, that your Father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. And your Father who is in secret will reward you openly. Years ago, the Lord spoke something to me that literally changed my life. He said to me, you cannot expect me to be with you in public if you're not with me in private. Changed my life. I realized that. Because here's the thing. If you are not with him in private, you'll be intimidated when you come to the public. Because then you are on your own. He's not going to be dishonest. Say, so I know God, I know God. And God be like, mm -mm. born again stranger. Don't be a born again stranger. Next verse. Hallelujah. And when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Amen. Next verse. But you be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. Next verse. Hallelujah. After this manner, therefore pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Skip over to, to verse... 16, verse 16. 
Moreover, when you, not when you slow, but when you fast. That means if you want acceleration in your walk of faith and in the things you believe in God for, he told you how to make it happen fast. Ah, you don't see it. When you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, they, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Very nice saying to you, they have the reward. So don't walk around with a white wall. No Vaseline on your face. Chopped and chapped lips. <laughs> How are you? I'm fasting. I'm fasting. Me, I'm fasting. Don't disturb me, I'm fasting. You have your reward. You don't need to announce to people what you are doing. This is a corporate fast, which is fine in the announcement of it because we can all join. But if you do an individual fast as well, it's none of anybody else's business. Even when you go to work tomorrow, don't tell people I'm fasting. Put the vase line. Please. Don't be us foul. Look good. Look normal. If they say, are you going to have something? Alakamos etal, nandos and whatnot. And believe me, you're going to be tempted. People that are stingy will invite you for lunch. Someone you never dreamed of that they would ever, they will be, feel so generous. An anointing will come on them to invite you out. Just so you can stop your fasting focus. And all of a sudden, here they come with generosity. And you know, so maybe just a little, maybe just a... When you start entertaining those thoughts, you are in trouble. You must run. Just say, no, I'm all right. Don't worry. <laughs> Amen. And go find you a place where you are silent and praying. It's fasting and prayer. No prayer, hunger strike. And you cannot be doing the things you do every day in a fast. Hello? Social media. I'll die. I must know what's going on in the world. No, you don't need to know. Amen? You need to put, you're turning the plate upside down because you're not eating. But also, you are not casual. Old conversations, chit-chatting. No, no, no. You need, God wants you for himself. When you fast, when you fast, which means it should be a lifestyle. Remember we saw the power trinity. When you give, when you pray, when you fast. If you apply those three in your life constantly, you'll be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Say amen. amen. So you don't announce those things. Those things you do between you and God. As a lifestyle. Say amen. Now, I want us to go. Let's look at the definition of fasting. Fasting is the, it's abstaining from food for a spiritual purpose. Did you hear what I said? It's not just abstaining from food. It's abstaining from food for a spiritual purpose. There's something you want accomplished spiritually. The number one reason, I want you to write this down 300 times, the, one, the number one reason for fasting is to minister to the Lord. The thing about it, fasting doesn't change God. It changes you. Amen. God is always giving Always exhaling. Always. You, you cannot stop him from being who he is. The problem is a lot of times you miss it because you are too carnal. Food makes you lethargic. 
Ich bin so geil, ey. Was ist mit mir? Ich like mit Gott. When you, when you present your body as a living sacrifice to God, you are declaring to him that he is more important to you than any other pleasures he's given you. God has given us our appetites, but our appetites are not supposed to rule us. If your appetite rules you, you are in idolatry. The worship of the creature rather than the creator. When we think of idolatry, we see a Buddha pop. That's what we see when we think about idolatry. But anything that takes God's place is an idol. So you may not have visible idols in your life, but God looks at you and says, Do you know you? The TV is an idol. Facebook is an idol. Instagram. And now the big one. Hours and hours on that phone, some people. Is that war or is that war? So you need to dethrone every idol and you wonder why you don't see what God wants you to see. Why it's not that easy when you pray for the sick and nothing happens. You are in full of flesh. And it's not that God doesn't heal. God needs a pipe that's clean. The water is pouring purely from one side, God's side, into a clogged pipe. What's going to come out on the other side? Boop, boop, fail water. So fasting cleans your pipe. It makes you sharp in the spirit because now you can hear clearly and now you can, because your flesh will fight you for the first few days, eventually your flesh will say, Ish. Looks like I must submit here. This person is serious. And when your flesh is quiet, your spirit starts rising up. And all of a sudden, prayer is easy. It's no longer an effort. It's no longer a struggle. You're just in there. And you're just enjoying God. That's what He wants. So then His power comes and it starts flowing through you effortlessly. Amen. Go to Isaiah 58. Amen. Isaiah or Isaiah, depending on what camp you're from. Amen. Let's read from verse 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? God's chosen fast. To loose the bands of wickedness. In other words, if there are bondages in your life, Believe God that during this fast, it will break off of you. Huh? Look what God says. To loose the bands of wickedness. If you're bound by nicotine, ah, you'll have cake, man. Because there are sanctified puffers in the church. How long are you going to let the devil whip you? How long? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Imagine the Holy Spirit in that temple. <coughs> you can get rid of it. I understand it's a struggle, but you believed a lie that it's more powerful than God. The minute you, you, you start believing that this is possible, some of you need to say, Lord, I'm willing to be willing because you don't want to leave it. You like it. Ek het niemand sy naam gemenschen nie. My oor is toe. I'm preaching the word of God. You need to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Because it hinders what God can do for you and through you. Any type of carnality. And I mean, it's wonderful for us to focus on the outward sins of people. But what about the gossiper? bad. Amen. The one with outbursts of anger. Your flesh is baie levendig and moet gekruisig word. Hallelujah, ek voel hom. 
Die pinkster gees, amen. So God will break it off of you. So I want you to set some fasting goals. Because you don't want to waste your time. You want to see results. So set your focus, Lord. I've never done this in my life before, but I'm going for it. I need a change. Some of you need to ask God for a divine encounter. Oh, I'm telling you, once you have an encounter with God, you will change. Some of you need God to come in there and just knock you out for three days. However the encounter will come, when He touches you, you will know you've been touched. Look at anyone in Scripture who did anything amazing for God. It did not happen without an encounter. Moses afraid running away until he had a burning bush experience. The same man who was fearful went back and faced his fear. The Apostle Paul out killing Christians because he was so zealous for his pharisaical faith. He was a Pharisee and he really believed he was doing God a favor and working for God. Once he had his Damascus experience, what happened to Paul? Became the greatest apostle of the New Testament. Amen? So you need an encounter. So throughout this fast, say, God, come and meet me. I want you to touch me in a unique way. You will do it. He says, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. Don't fake yourself, uh, try and fake God out you don't really desire. You can not see your proud nonsense. So you need to start by saying, God, make me hungry. Because you can't fake a hunger that's not there. So start by asking God to make you hungry. Because you're giving him permission to do something. So Lord, give me a hunger for you. There's too much things I desire and that my heart is attached to. Take my heart off of those and put it on you. Make me hungry and watch what will happen to you. Y'all look at me funny. Right, the next one. And to undo the heavy burdens. The Bible calls the anointing, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So if there's a burden weighing you down, a fast is good. If sickness is in your body, a fast is good. Because look, let's read further, you'll see it. And to let your oppressed go free. So you'll be anointed. Whoever's oppressed round about you, they must go free. If you have any kind of oppression, sickness is an oppression. Uh, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Oppression, sickness is demonic oppression. Say so it's normal, it's natural, it's devils. You need to resist them. Amen. And that you break every yoke. So that means you're going to go free of whatever is yoking you. Next verse. So the anointing will be turned up on the inside of you. Because it's there. Uh, 1 John chapter 2 verse 20. You have an anointing from the Holy One. The anointing abides in you. It's there. But why is it not working? Too much flesh is alive. Is it not that you deal your bread to the hungry? Amen. Another thing you can do, the money, the food you have, go give it away. No, he says, go give your bread to the hungry. Feel what they feel. You are so used to being full, yet long class compassion gehad op iemand wat honger is. So God says, I want you to feel what they feel. Go give them the food so that they can feel what you have all the time. And that you bring the poor that are cast out to your house. Ah, come sit, man, eat. I was going to sit here and eat. 
maar jy is honger sit en eet. Isn't that, can you see how God is just not about self? Everything we do has to be about somebody else. Our Father, which art in heaven, not my Father. He's an all-inclusive God. When you pray, say, Our Father. There are people that need their Father. Mm. When you see the naked that you cover him, and you hide not your face from your own flesh, because every human being is your own flesh. Is it wahr? A praat nie van jou sister en jou broer, according to the flesh. No, everybody is your flesh. What did Jesus say? Your neighbor is anyone who is in trouble that needs your help. Amen. Next verse. Watch what happens because you've done the proper fast. God's chosen way of fasting. Watch what will happen. Then shall your light break forth as the morning. You want revelation? What is light? Illumination. If you walk into a dark room and you turn on the light, you are illuminated to see clearly what's in the room. Now, maybe you have issues in your life. You need answers to certain questions. You don't know what your calling is. You don't know any of that. Your light will break forth as the morning. When you're in a fast and you're in seeking God, all of a sudden, the light will turn on. You'll be like, man, so that's what I'm called to do. So that's what my purpose is. Some of you are at that crossroads now. You are very unhappy with where you are. Which means it's time to move on. And God is responsible for your frustration. So that he can move you to the next level. Amen. So you will get revelation. Light will break forth as the morning. So in other words, the night ended. So that nightmare that you have been in, it must end. And fasting will end it. Some of you have been in that nightmare for years. Everything you do, you just can't seem to get ahead. It's almost living. You know when you, when you, because every time you're trying to get your hands on something, Satan moves the, the, the line. So come, come. Now you move. Now you gather up energy for the next step. As we are move. The post keeps moving, and you live in almost life. I almost had enough money. I almost was happy. I almost was married. I almost had a child. You can't live like that. The devil is robbing you. So you want to break the almost into, I always fast and pray. Mm. I felt that one. And thine health shall spring forth speedily. Now, Hear me, hear me good. If you are on medication, please consult your doctor. Moni said, I man het gesê, ek moet fast, dan gebeur goeders met jou, dan kom jy hier en vir my wil vloek. I am asking you, go to your doctor and consult them. But any type of fast is good. There are many ways to fast and I'll show you. And you and God decide what kind of a fast you want to do. Amen? But remember this, if it doesn't mean anything to you, it doesn't mean anything to God. You know where you are at. Amen? Like if you're the kind of person who, I know some people, they, they eat one meal a day. It's lifestyle. So if you say to him, okay, stay with your one meal a day, it doesn't mean anything for him to him. He must make a sacrifice beyond that because he's used to one meal a day. But maybe you have four meals a day because yes, diamonds. So it's really going to be a sacrifice for you to cut your meals. So that will mean something to God because it means something to you. Are you following me? All right. <laughs> your health shall break forth speedily. I heard a preacher testify, he says, when he went on his first fast of 28 days, God healed him of asthma. Because there's something that happens when you're on a fast, it resets your body. 
So first of all, if it, do you know that your tongue is connected to your rectum? As one organ, right through. This varum, when you fast, your mouth starts smelling after a few days. The system is cleaning itself out. And eventually, after you've done a pro prolonged fast, I'm talking no food and just water, right? You're cleaning your system. You are not going to die. The devil will tell you, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> your body can handle 40 days. It can handle a 40 day. After 40 days, you are starving. Then your body will eat itself up. That's what needs dangerous. But this body is powerful. So when you go through a fast, you are cleaning, you are resetting your system. So in other words, I hear sutant head. <laughs> After a fast, you like a new baby that must be trained to like things. Remember the baby eat tasteless cause, and that's all right. But then you teach them what they like. Then they say, oh, I like salty things. Or, oh, I like sweet things. So now they, there's a training of your appetite, your palate to, to develop this appetite. And then eventually you, you become, you, are, you, are, you like what you like. But now let's say you want to get rid of sugar in your diet because you know it's not good. After you fast, you are a new person. So now you'll find that certain you'll actually get to a place where the course mark you nar. After the first seven, eight days, you won't want food. <laughs> you like kick me like I was not going to come some. You will find that like you won't be able to like handle food and the smell of it. You'll be like, Shwach, man. Because something is happening to your system. It's saying, thank you, I'm in a restful state. You are cleaning me out. You're cleaning your entire system. It's so powerful. Those are the benefits, but remember your focus was, I want to see God. But those are the rewards. Don't go for those things. Go for God and watch the reward. And your righteousness shall go before you. Hallelujah. Your impact. If you want God to, to make you an influence, be a person of fasting and prayer. Because then He will anoint what you do and say. And then your influence will start spreading. Amen. People will come and invite you. Come, please. Come. And then your influence will grow. Like when Jesus came off the mountain, what does the Bible say? When he came after his fast, and he came into the city, and he began to say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. because And the Bible says, the fame of him spread. You want to be famous, can you? But be famous for the right reason, not for twerking. Men's about famous is for nonsense. Serious. Oh, yeah, they act like they don't know what I'm talking about. Church people. I don't know what you're talking about, my brother. I'm in the spirit. I just love the Lord. I don't know what's happening around me. That the glory of the Lord shall be your reward. Like the glory of God comes upon your life. What is glory? If you understand the word glory, it's two. Uh, it, it's doxa in Greek and kabod in Hebrew. It means the weightiness of God. So God is heavy, weighty with health. God is so, God is so powerfully weighty with healing. If all of earth would believe God for healing, He would heal all of us and not break a sweat. So that's the weightiness. And God says, I want my weightiness to rest on you. He's weighty with prosperity. Do you think you'll lack anything if the weighty one is with you? Ah, that's where God wants to take you and I to a place of where we are so 
full of him that whoever comes around you must they'll send something to say something is on you what is this that i'm feeling and then they will get delivered just by you just being there when you hear the testimonies of 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 the revivalists of old there were these two brothers they were so powerful we would come into a city the anointing of God would move through them so powerfully. They would close bars. They would close brothels, taverns. Everything would close down for people to come and attend their meetings. That's talk. That's glory. Uh, the Azusa Street Revival was so awesome that, that people would in a... And the power of God would hit people in the street because of what was happening in a building. The Azusa Street Revival, go do some research on it. It's so powerful that this man was so humble, he would even hide behind the pulpit as he would see the glory of God come into the place. The fire department came twice because they saw a fire, but it was a spiritual fire. They went, like Moses in the burning bush, but it was because of the revival. When people were, people came from all over the world to come and encounter the presence of God. Now, is it because it was just a wonderful season in history that God just decided to do that? No, He found a people hungry enough for Him to do that. So He is coming to you and I and say, Are you those people that's going to do something significant for me? You will meet us at the point of our hunger. You see? But as you know, the happiest made you leave us was at us. If you go up into Africa, these people are so desperate for God. You see like what I call violent miracles. Legs growing out. Why? Because these people are hungry. They don't have the luxuries of life that we have. You see, you live your life. God has no issues. But at the end of the day, God says, Are you willing to lay down weights, not just sins? Hebrews says, Lay aside the weight and the sins that so easily beset us. So sometimes there are things we do that may not necessarily be sinful, but it's a weight. You see? So when you grow in God, you have to decide. The sin is out, so are the weights. Because when the weights go, now you are in, the devil is in trouble. Because now God says, I have found a vessel through which I can flow and bring about a revival. They asked Catherine Coleman, how is it that you're so powerful? What is the price for this anointing on your life? And you know, in her candid way, child, it simply costs everything. It cost her everything. But the anointing was so heavy on that woman, she went through a kitchen to go see a friend and people were falling under the power. She's just walking through the kitchen because she wanted to go see a friend of hers. The chefs and everybody that was working there, boop, 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 under the power of God because she paid a price. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now I want to show you some reasons why you should fast. That may, if I read some of them, you probably will think, ah, that's what I need to do. Do you need healing or a miracle? Amen. Do you need the tender touch of God on your life? You want to you wanna get away from this dry, boring Christian life. You want fire. Smoke is not good. But fire is powerful. There's something about a fire that makes you stare. Is it bad? Have you ever seen a building or something burn? You just go. I remember when our building burned, 2017. Remember there was on the news that I work at that building. So we were in the building that day. Like, uh, I was busy training, setting projectors up and everything. This guy comes casually. Uh, guys, the building is on fire. So, ca so casually. So I said, okay, 
we're going to vacate. I pack up everything. I put the projector back. I'm on the third floor. I put the projector back in the bag. I go back to eighth floor where I'm from. Our office is there. I go into the uh, cupboard there, put the projector away, put stuff in the safe. I grab my bag. I go out. When I got outside, I just heard windows exploding as that fire was coming down. I was like, and I was just so chilled, man. Look at this. And eventually, everybody's standing opposite by the library, Latuli House. Play your lunch, Joe Book. <laughs> Latuli House. And we're all standing across the street because they're now cordoned off the place. And we're all watching the building burn. And windows exploding and things. And this fire just coming and coming and coming. Now, that, if you get on fire for God, people will come and watch you burn. They will come from everywhere just to be, she, she's where? We need to go and see. And then just come and look at you. And then you ignite them. Unsteaklijke fear. Nie fear, nie fear. That's Afrikaans. Is it right, Robin? <laughs> Is there a dream inside you that only he can make possible? If your dream is possible, it's not from God. It has to be impossible so He can get the glory. He wants to do it through you. So when you're in that place of fasting and prayer, something will wake up on the inside of you that's bigger than you, that scares you spitless. Spitless? You look at it like, there is no way I can do that. And God said, yep, that's me. But we can do it if you take one step at a time. And it will get done. Because you'll pay for it. Say amen. And here's the thing. You will, I love what Benny used to say. He says, if you've been with the king, you don't fear the queen. When you come from that place of God's presence... Nothing in this world will intimidate you. Amen. I don't care who's in what power and what office and what. You will stand bold in front of them and speak the word of God. Because you are another person. Because you are full of the Holy Ghost. And you will do whatever needs to be done to get the job done. The courage will come from the Spirit of God. So in the midst of fear... In intimidation, you will push through because something inside of you is pushing you and it's the Spirit of God. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Are you in need of a fresh encounter as we said earlier? Maybe you've never had an encounter. It's time to get one. God loves you. He's not a respecter of persons. He'll give you one and it will be exactly tailor-made for you. You know, some people think, oh, I don't like, I don't want to, I see this falling in the spirit thing. It's not for me. God won't force a falling in the spirit on you. Yeah. But he'll touch you. And it'll make sense to you. Because he knows you. He loves all of us differently. He loves you uniquely. Yeah. Oh, you don't hear me. Because he knows your love language. So he'll speak it. And touch you what, in a way that matters to you. And get the message across that my father loves me. After this one, I know. Are we together? Forever. Do you desire a deeper, more intimate and powerful relationship with the Lord? Amen. Say, that's me. Are you ready to be a heightened are you ready to have a heightened sensitivity to the desires of God? You feel what He feels. You think what He thinks. That's a powerful place to be at. That's why Jesus was so anointed. Not because He was the Son of God. It was just because He was smart enough to yield to the, to the Father. Amen. Do you need to break away from bondages that have held you hostage? Amen. Amen. Is there a friend or loved one that needs salvation? Channel your faith 
during your fast, Lord, Sue and Sue will meet you in a powerful way. Amen. You need to stand on the word. Let no one in your family go to hell. Refuse it. Refuse. You must say, it's your tough luck that you are my family member. I am in the face of God on your behalf. If God has to come and slap you in the middle of the night, he's going to do it. But saved you will get. Amen. You must tell them. <laughs> do, you, do you desire to know God, God's will for your life? So if you want guidance, there you go. Shut down the TV. Say amen. The TV must offer for 21 days. Do you know how much time we take to cook food? <laughs> she seems to be the cooker there in your house. Ne? It, it takes at least four hours to prepare a meal. You go to the store. You buy the ingredients. That's a irveg. As he, as he shopped your midrash. <laughs> so it's at least some time away. You bring the stuff home. An hour is gone. Now you prepare. Chopping up. Chopping up. Ne? Another half a year. Now you start cooking the rice. Whatever you... And some of you, you like to have the feast of tabernacles. You, The table is... What do you call it? Seven colors. <laughs> You spread, right? It's all of that, right? Another hour. Now you feed and eat. That ate 10 minutes, Mara's dishes. So then you are busy with dishes. And what is another hour gone? Easily three to four hours on one meal. Now imagine you're not doing that. Four hours you can give to God. Four hours of read my Bible. Praise and worship, Lord. I you just go like that the whole day. You will be amazed at how quickly things change. Amen. You look cake, me. She's a make cake. Right. Here's what we are doing. The reason why we do it every January is because we are tithing our year. We are paying tithe. What is tithe? Not 10%, but first 10%. So we're taking the first of the year and saying, God, this is yours. That means you are harvesting blessing for Feb, March, right up until December. What you do with this month will set the tone for your whole year. Amen. And during the fast, you can do the same with your 24 hours. Tithe your 2.4 hours. Spend time with God. At least a tenth of your day. You don't have 20 hours to sleep. Amen. Tithe from your day. When you wake up, before you do anything, time with God. Say amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that's what we are doing. We're seeking God and his kingdom. Now I want to show you types of fastings so you, you and God can decide what it is he's telling you to do. Full fast. Drink only liquids. And if you're doing a full fast and you're going to drink liquids, do not drink acidic juices. Only, only pure juice would be like cranberry juice and apple juice because there's no acid. The others, the orange and what, don't, don't go there. Right? You're going to do a uh, 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 a pure. Some people will, may have like a herbal tea, some honey, just for strength. They, they do that, right? You can do that because you're doing a complete fast. No food. You can do it. You, you actually can do it. Al you can do it. 
That's a full fast. Then you have the Daniel fast. No meat, no sweets, no bread. Drink only water and juice and eat fruit and vegetables. If that's where your faith is at, go for it. Amen? Daniel did that fast and it was a great reward for his health. So if you are not used to fasting, you can start with a Daniel fast. Say amen. Some people do it, uh, they, they, maybe the first week they do a Daniel fast. The second week they maybe go three days with a full fast. Let the Lord lead you. It's not length, but leading. Yeah. Amen. God will lead you. Amen. Three day fast. Some people do those three day. Full fast. Right? Three day full, like I, I only drink water. Maybe that's, maybe you'll do the first week. Daniel fast. Second week, you say, uh, 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 I'm going to do, I'm going to have a full day. Some people do 24 hours. Right? You go from, you go from what they call intermittent fasting. You may decide, okay, today for this next 24 hours, I don't eat anything. Then tomorrow you may have a soup or something, depending on where you're at and how God is leading you. Say Amen. We're not, we're not trying to be legalistic here because then you lose the essence of it. Then you are just going to be in the flesh. We want, you want to have fruit and results from what you are doing. Amen? The fast that can be a full, three-day fast, full fast, Daniel fast, give up at least one item. But remember, you've got to get off social media and those things. Those things are time stealers of note. Amen? You can't be doing what you do all day long. Sit around and chit chat with everybody. You cannot. Get alone with God. Every waking minute you get, get alone with God. When you come from work, straight to your prayer closet. If you have a family, you need to feed, feed your family, the children and so forth. It's fine. But go and pray. Say amen. amen. Partial fast. A partial fast is from 6 a.m. in the morning till 6 at night. Some people do that. Right? So 6 a.m. you don't eat until after 6 p.m. You've done a 12-hour fast. Sun up to sundown. So you, go, you can go from the full. So select between... Full fast, Daniel fast, and giving up certain things. Now, for some of us, we, we may need to give up coffee. Woo! Some people, yo. Coffee is hala alles. Ek function nie as ek my koffie gehere te. Really? That's a lie you believe. There was a time in your life you didn't have coffee. To kling was, jy gefunction, yeah. No, you grow this. Oh, I can't. I can't. Ah, don't believe lies. <laughs> Whatever you set your mind to, you can do. Amen. Nothing must be in authority over you. God gave you dominion. I know one preacher. He wear him some coffee up to here. He say, "Lord, let me alien. Lord, let me." When I'm on a 20, if I, I fast for 20, but I must have my coffee. I say, ye nu nog deliverance preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you have the individual fast, you have the corporate fast. This is a corporate fast, but I want you to make a decision throughout the year. You become a person of fasting regularly. Especially if you're in ministry, you can feel it that I'm losing my edge. I'm not a sharper. Then you know I need to draw aside and spend time, extra time praying, extra time fasting, extra time giving. Amen? So throughout this fast, make sure you, you pray a lot, give a lot, and fast. Amen. Matthew 6. I'll read a few scriptures as we close. Did you learn anything today? I hope you did. Amen. Hmm. 
Wait, 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 wait. What did I say, Matthew? I want you to do Matthew 21, rather. Hallelujah. So we see here in Matthew 21 where Jesus talks about faith. Uh, let me just see where I want to start reading from. Hallelujah. No, I am actually wrong. Forgive me. Matthew 17. Yeah, I found it. Matthew 17. From verse 14. And when they were come in when when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falls into the fire and oftentimes into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation. Notice the words Jesus are using. Faithless, which means you are without faith. Okay, keep that in mind. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. So here they bring him. All right, next verse. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. So, next verse. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, Why could, we, could not we cast him out? And Jesus answered them saying, Jesus said unto because of your... So, here's the, here's the scenario. Here they come to the disciples this man, he says, my son is a demoniac, a lunatic. They pray, they pray, they pray, nothing happens. They will probably laughed at them. Then they come to Jesus. He, the man comes to Jesus. He says, Lord, I took my son to your disciples. They couldn't help. Jesus says, oh, faithless. So it's a big clue. Faithless and perverse generation. So your faith is little, less. And there's perversion. Right? So get out the perversion and up your faith. Next verse. Be and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. There's no such thing as non-belief. As a human being, you cannot but believe. So atheism is a lie. A For verily I say unto you, if you have faith, notice Jesus is talking faith again. As a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove from hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Next verse. How be this kind goes out not but by prayer and fasting. He's not saying the demon is going, doesn't go out, but if you fast and pray. He's talking about the unbelief. Remember, he started off with faithless. Then he started off with, because of your unbelief. Why could we not cast him out? Because of your unbelief. Not because the demon is so powerful. How be it this kind of unbelief does not go out but by prayer and fasting. I hope you got it. Look at the context. He's talking about faith and he's talking about unbelief. Then he says, for you to handle things on this level, you need to up your faith. And the way you up your faith in certain areas is by fasting and prayer. Because Jesus at that point wasn't fasting and praying, so it can't be that. 
He wasn't fasting when he cast the demon out. Because it would have applied to him as well. If he had to say, this kind of demon only comes up by fasting and praying. Come to us next week. We're going to go on a three-day fast to deal with this demon. You would have said that. The, 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 some of you, you have a kind of unbelief that will not come out until you fast and pray. Because you need to meditate. You need to meditate until you screen out the unbelief. Huh? Some of you, if you close your eyes, you see unemployment. And you tell how many times you pray, but you still see unemployment. You still see lack. You still see empty fridge. You still see empty this, empty this. It's because it's ingrained in because of nature and nurturing. So what do you need to do? Go into that word of God and wipe it out by looking at the promises of God. Fasting, praying. My God will supply all my needs according to this. But you're fasting, you're praying. Uh, your health, you close your eyes, you still see the sickness. You still see that leg. You still see that rash. You, you need to get to the place where you don't see it anymore. So screen it out by fasting and praying and staying in the word of God until when you close your eyes, you see your victory. Then you will get your victory. Say, I see it. So I am challenging us this season. Let it not be just another thing we do. Let this mark a turning point in your life to say, Lord, after this fast, I won't recognize myself. I will be on such a high level with you. And I want to maintain that trajectory throughout the year. Say amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If you're here this morning and you want a change in your life, a true change begins with Jesus. God sent Jesus to die for you on the cross. If you're here and you've never been born again, you don't even know what it means. We are all born sinners in this world and we can't save ourselves. That's why God sent Jesus to die for our sins. And the scripture says, if we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and confess with our mouth, God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. God wants to save you from a future without him in hell. Hell was never made for human beings. It was made for the devil and his angels. But because of the son of Adam, we are headed towards hell automatically. That's why we must be born again. So if you've never been born again, we want to pray with you and for you that you would be saved. In this house, anyone who's never given your life to Christ, what a way to start the new year to give your life to Him. Raise a hand right high and we're going to pray together. Anyone you want to be saved, you want to be born again, we want to pray with you. Those of you watching us, wherever you are, in your living room, in the bedroom, wherever you are, Jesus will come to where you are. And as we pray together the sinner's prayer, if you mean it with your heart in all sincerity, He will come into your life and change you. So those of you in this house, you want to be saved, raise a hand high so we can pray with you. So we can see and agree with you. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm a sinner. Your word says, you send Jesus to die for my sins. He became my substitute. So today, I confess Jesus as Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. According to your word, I am inscribed on the palm of your hand. And I thank you from today that I'm a child of God. My sins are forgiven. I renounce the devil. I renounce the life of sin. And I believe that Christ 
sits enthroned in my heart. According to your word, I am now born again. I am now saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. We see you next week. Hallelujah.